most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Now, gracious Heavenly Father, as we open thy word to study today, direct us by the Holy Spirit, for Jesus' sake, amen. Yesterday, we read verses 15, 16, and 17 in John chapter 1. We discussed all of verses 15 and 16, except the last statement in verse 16, and grace for grace. I spent almost the entire broadcast on the statement of his fullness have all we received. Now, when we receive the fullness of Jesus, we receive the fullness of the Godhead because in Colossians 2, 9, and 10, we learn that in Jesus dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Let me say this before we go on. In him we receive life. John 10, 28, Jesus declares that he gives life to his sheep. Then in John 14, 27, we receive peace. In John 15, 11, we receive joy. And certainly, we receive the Holy Spirit in John 17, 14, and John 20, and verses 22. In Jesus, in the great storehouse of Jesus, we have all that we need in time and eternity. The fullness of of the Godhead, all that we need, all that we shall ever need in this life or in eternity, we have in Jesus. Now, what does that statement mean? And grace for grace, and grace for grace. We have received grace upon grace, heaped up, pressed down, running over. My grace is sufficient for thee. Grace for grace, new grace for all grace. I mean by that, day by day, we receive new grace for the needs of that day. If yes, in other words, yesterday's grace is not sufficient for today's needs. So he gives us grace day by day. Paul prayed three times for God to remove the thorn in his flesh. God did not remove the thorn, but God said, my grace, my grace is sufficient for thee. So grace upon grace simply means that whatever the need is, he supplies that need. The grace of God saves us, the grace of God sustains us, the grace of God keeps us, and the grace of God supplies our every need. Now verse 17, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Lest I forget later, this is the only place in the gospel of John that we have Jesus Christ. Now, it is stated in other ways, that is, Christ and Jesus and Christ Jesus, but right here is the only place in the Gospel of John that we have the name Jesus Christ. When I say, Brother Green, what difference does it make? Let me say this in passing. Do you think that the Holy Spirit just took words and we might say just placed them on the page at random? We read about Jesus. For instance, Joseph was told to name him Jesus. Why? Jesus is his earthly name. It means Savior. And since Savior means grace, and there is no salvation apart from grace, Titus 2.11, the grace of God bringeth salvation. The grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness. Read Titus 2.11.12 and following. So Jesus is his earthly name, and it means Savior. Now, Joseph named him Jesus. He'll save his people. Now, the word Christ, or the name Christ, I should say, is deity. It has to do with his divine nature. He was God's Christ before he became man's Jesus. Now, in verse 17, it does not say Christ Jesus. It says Jesus Christ. Now, I believe the name Jesus refers to grace. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace, Jesus was God's grace. Jesus brought grace down to man. 
By the grace of God, he tasted death for every man, Hebrews 2, 9. So, here, and it's the only place in the salvation gospel. John's gospel is the salvation gospel. Read chapter 20, verses 30, 31. Now, since this is the salvation gospel, and there is no salvation apart from grace, then we find the name Jesus. Grace and truth came by Jesus. So, Jesus points to grace... And Christ points to truth. Now, that doesn't mean that Jesus did not tell the truth. Jesus could not lie. But it simply means that grace to save and truth to make known grace came by Jesus, grace, Christ, truth. He said, I, you should know the truth, and the truth shall make them, make you free. Now, in John, that's in John 8, 32. In John 17, 17, we read, Sanctify them through thy truth, Thy word is truth. Now, wait a minute. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. In John 15, 3, now ye are clean through the word, through the word. All right. He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And in 1 Peter 1, 23, being born again, not of seed that corrupt, but seed that cannot corrupt by the word. Now, watch it. In the beginning was the word. Now, that's Christ. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Deity. So Christ, the Word, in the beginning with God. But Jesus, the Savior, Jesus, grace brought down to man the fullness of grace. Now, just a minute. Watch this. Grace for grace. Now, in the Old Testament, certainly there was truth. And certainly there was grace. But wait a minute. Hebrews 1 God at sundry times and in divers manners, that is, in various ways. God spoke to the fathers by what? The prophets, or by whom, I should say, the prophets. But in these last days, how has God spoken? By his Son, Son. Now then, who is the Son? Christ, the truth. So God hath spoken. Now, in the Old Testament, there was grace, there was truth. But the fullness of grace... And the fullness of truth came down in Jesus Christ. The law was given by Moses. Now watch this. The law was given by Moses. Now, this may shock some of you, but I want you to study your Bible before you cut the gospel hour off and say, I'm finished with Oliver Green. This may shock you. I don't, I know it won't shock many of you, but some of you may be a little bit surprised. The law never has saved a soul. The law never was given to save a soul. The law, by the law is the knowledge of sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin. Now wait just a minute and I'll tell you something. We can go to the hospital. In fact, I've been and I'll be going until I die to get x-rays. I'll be x-rayed every six months as long as I live. Why do I go for x-rays? X-rays show in my body if there is uh, something there that must be removed by surgery, as I have had two major, and I mean extremely major, operations. And I may have to have another, and it may be soon. I don't know. Now, here's what I'm saying to you, and I want you to hear me. The trouble that I have, x-rays cannot cure, but they can show the need of surgery. Now, here's what I want you to see. This may be a very crude illustration. The law, Paul said, Paul said the law is a schoolmaster, and by the law is the knowledge of sin. And Paul said in in, um, Romans 3.20, by the deeds of the law, there should be no flesh justified. Now, that's the word of God, and you'll have to take it. I can't, I didn't write it. I didn't have a thing to do with it, and you can't do anything about it. Now, I don't care what you say. And I was traveling not so long ago, and I heard one of the coast-to-coast broadcast make the statement that these preachers telling you that the law uh, can't save you. I'm telling you now that the law can't save you. I'll tell you now that the law cannot save you because the Word of God tells me that the law cannot save anyone, and the Word of God tells me in Romans 3.20, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh justified. And I'll tell you something else. If you're guilty of the least of these commandments, you're guilty of every last one of them. Now, if you have broken the least of the commandments, 
You're guilty of every last jot and every tittle of the law. Now that's Bible. You see, I'm not trying to defend some religion. I'm not defending some denomination. I'm not defending some church. And I'm not defending some theological school. I'm preaching the word of God. So, watch it. The law was given. The law was given. The law came to Moses on Mount Sinai and uh, in the midst of thunder and lightning. And brother, uh, the old mountain quaked and anyone, anything or anyone that touched the mountain died. Bless your soul. The law, the letter killeth. Now, listen to Romans. I'd better read it. I was about to quote it, but I must, I just must read it. In Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, I read that verse just to get the connection for, that conjunction for. There is therefore now no condemnation in which are in Christ Jesus for, that conjunction for the law of the Spirit of life, the law of the Spirit, not the law of Moses. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, watch it. For what the law, now that's the law of Moses, what the law could not do. Why? In that it was weak through the flesh. Now, preacher, are you, are you trying to discredit God's law? No. Oh, no. In Romans 7, 14, the law is spiritual, I am carnal. The law is holy. In verse 12, uh, Romans 7, 12, Wherefore the law is holy, the commandment holy, just and good. The law is holy, the commandment is holy, and just and good. So when I read the law, it shows me how sinful I am and how I need a Savior. But it shows me, and that's all, it can't save me. It cannot save me. The law can't save me. Because by the deeds of the law, no flesh justified. In Matthew five seventeen, Jesus fulfilled every jot, every tittle, every iota of the law. Jesus fulfilled it. And therefore, we receive the fullness of the law and the fullness of grace and grace for grace. But it is by Jesus, not by the law. The law came by Moses. God thundered out on Mount Sinai, the law. But now watch this. Grace and truth. The law was given. Now you see, I misquoted the word of God. And I don't know how many of you caught it, but I'm glad the Holy Spirit reminded me. I'm glad the Holy Spirit. That shows you the power of the devil. Now you watch this, and this is tremendous. You say, Brother Green, what did you misquote? Here's what I misquoted. I said the law came by Moses. Didn't do any such thing. The Bible said the law was given by Moses. The law was given. But grace and truth was not given. Grace and truth came. Grace and truth came. God was grace. Uh, uh, Jesus was God. And God is truth. And Jesus was grace. And grace saves us. Now the only way in the world that you can be saved by grace is to hear the truth. In John 8, 32, I quoted a moment ago. Now, in in, in, in uh, Romans, uh, where I read to you a moment ago, and I never did finish it, for what the law could not do in that it was reaped through the flesh, God sending, God sending. Now, you watch this. The law, the law was given, but God sent the truth. God thundered out the law on Mount Sinai, but God sent the truth. What the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And you can't walk after the Spirit until you're born of the Spirit. And when you're born of the Spirit, you're born from above. And when you're born of the Spirit, you possess the Holy Ghost. And when you possess the Holy Ghost... You possess the fullness of God because Father, Son, and Holy Ghost abides in Jesus and Jesus in you, Christ in you. Colossians 1.27 is the hope of glory. And so we have life in him and through him because ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now, in Titus 3, we find a very interesting passage that needs to be read and reread, preached and preached again. And I'm going to read it today, and here it is. 
Titus 3 and verse 4. Well, I tell you, to get the connection, and I, 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 I must, I must conserve every minute I can because this is precious time, but I feel it's time well spent to begin with verse 1, Titus 3, 1. But them, put them in mind to be subject to principalities, powers, and magistrates, and to be ready to every good work. Speak evil no man to be, not to be brawlers, be gentle, show meekness to all men. Now, for we, Paul said, Titus, you and I, we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers, lusts and pleasures, living in malice, envy, hateful, hating one another. Now, Titus, you and I, all of us, we, and so was I, and so was you, you may be the best Christian in your community today, but one time you was foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers, lusts and pleasures, living in malice, envy, hateful, hating one another. Now, here's that conjunction. But after the law, no. No, it didn't say after the law. But after the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared. The kindness and the love of God our Savior. You say, preacher, I thought Jesus was the Savior. He is. But so is God. You can't separate God and Jesus. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. One God manifest in three persons. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, yes. Three persons, yes. One God, one, all one. In Jesus dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. Today, God the Father is seated on the throne. God the Son sits by His side, our mediator. God the Holy Ghost is in my heart right now as I sit at my desk before this microphone. God the Holy Ghost in my heart. God the Son seated by the Father. God the Father on the throne. Now watch this. But after that, the kindness and love of God. Now what is the love of God? Who was the love of God? Jesus. Jesus. And our Savior. God our Savior. Toward man appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. No, no. Not by works. Not by the works of the law. The law is holy and just and right and good, and it's it's God's law. But not by works of righteousness, which we have done. But according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. But how did He wash us? John fifteen three. now ye are clean through the Word. Now ye are clean through the Word. He washes us by the water, by the Word. How does he wash us? Ephesians 5, 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of the water by the word. That's Ephesians 5, 26. And there he is speaking, in, in, in John 15, 3, he's speaking of individuals, the disciples. He's speaking to persons, individuals. But in Ephesians 5, 26, he's speaking of the church, the body, the bride. Jesus is the head. And the foundation, and we're bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, Ephesians 5.30. So, by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through, through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Glory to God. Titus 3, 1 through 6. Titus 3, uh, 1 through 7. Now, it is not by works, it is not by the law, but it is by Jesus, Savior, Christ, truth. We hear the truth, and the truth makes us free. Now listen to this. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, where do I find out that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God? Where do I find it out? I find it out in the Word of God. There is no other book on the face of the earth. There is no other book that tells me. Of course, I know there's sermon books and commentaries, but I mean there's only one Bible. Only one Bible. Just one God's Bible. One God's Word. And this book that I hold in my hand tells me that God so loved me that He set forth Jesus, and Jesus left the bosom of the Father And he was born of the Virgin Mary. And he took a body that in that body, by the grace of God, he could taste death for me and deliver me from fear, from fear because of the devil. Read Hebrews 2, 9, then read 14, Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. So Jesus, Savior, 
Christ, truth, makes us free. The law, never. All right? I want you to turn, please, because some of you are not fully satisfied. I want you to turn. I could quote it, but you turn to Romans 10. Turn to Romans 10, and I'm going to read it. And then the time for the message will be gone. Romans 10 and verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record, they have a zeal of God. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Now, where do we get knowledge? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, Proverbs 1, 7. Well, now, why do I fear God? Because I hear the Word. The Word of God teaches me to fear God. All right. For I bear them record, they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. But they being ignorant of God's righteousness, ignorant of God's righteousness. Now, who is God's righteousness? Christ is made unto us righteousness. God's righteousness is Christ. And going about to establish their own righteousness, through good works, of course, keeping the law and so forth, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They have not submitted unto Jesus. All right. For Christ, are you listening? For Christ, truth. Christ, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you're free indeed. John eight thirty two eight thirty six. For Christ is the end of the what? Law. For Christ is the end of the law, for what? Righteousness to everyone that doeth what? Believeth. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now, when you receive Jesus, Jesus, God's Christ, you receive the fullness of God, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption, holiness, truth, purity. Yes, praise God in Jesus Christ dwelleth all the fullness of God. Receive him right now. If you have not already, receive him now and let Jesus save you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, the life, I beg for every soul that's under conviction, save precious souls in Jesus' precious saving name. Amen.